Today, Japanese manufacturers produce more than 24 million motorcycles every year. That's nearly half the total of 50 million that are produced worldwide annually. The motorcycle is an ideal mode of transportation for Tokyo in spaces of premium and the often narrow roads are prone to heavy congestion. That may be one reason why motorcycles are so popular in this country. Let's start off today with a look at the current state of motorcycles in Japan. Today, many riders are finding a renewed interest in motorcycles with an engine larger than 400 cc. The riders that are making them so popular are people in their 50s and 60s. Not having to worry about my kids or my wife so much anymore means I have more free time. So I'd really like to spend that time riding a motorcycle. So the generation was first introduced to motorcycles during the 1960s and 70s. At that time, Japanese motorcycles and riders were beginning to win more and more international races. The international attention made motorcycles extremely popular in Japan in the 80s. Sales rose to an all-time high.
So I got my two bowls of noodles here which have been ordered and have to be delivered. I put them on the rack here and pull down on this section here. There we go, that's it. And you've got your springs here, stabilizer and shock absorber. So that even when the driver is making a turn, you don't get any spillage. Let me show you how that works. There you go. Turning right, turning left. You see how the carrier on the back is staying vertical the whole time. There we go, I think that should do it. Then you reach your destination, you pull up on this again, and there are your noodles intact. Isn't that ingenious? I reckon a contraption like this could probably only have been made in a place like Japan where noodle deliveries have been part of daily life going back decades. Motorcycles too have been part of daily life in Japan for many years. Next, let's take a look at how Japan became the world's top producer of them. Motorcycle production began in Japan in 1909. The first motorcycle was called the NS. It was modeled after Western motorcycles. It consisted of a regular bicycle fitted with a small engine. The technology of these early Japanese motorcycles was later improved by engineers who had worked in military production during the Second World War. A pivotal member of this group was Soichiro Honda, founder of Honda Motor Company. This is the Dream E-Type. It was developed by Honda in 1951. It used a four-stroke engine. The four-stroke engine has valves. One type lets a combination of fuel and air into the cylinder, where it is then compressed and ignited. Another type releases exhaust gases after ignition. At the time, the most common type of engine used in smaller motorcycles was the two-stroke engine. The two-stroke engine lacks the types of valves found in a four-stroke engine, so air intake and exhaust are handled entirely by the movement of the piston. Two-stroke engines have superior horsepower, but poor fuel efficiency. That's because they repeat the process of combustion more often than four-stroke engines. So Honda came up with the idea of improving the fuel efficiency of smaller motorcycles by fitting them with four-stroke engines. The commitment to constant technological improvement by Japanese manufacturers helped to increase demand for Japanese motorcycles. The Super Curb also won popularity because it did away with a left-hand clutch. In 1960, Japan became the world's largest producer of motorcycles, producing 1.4 million a year. However, at that time, the Japanese export market was still very small. Out of the 1.4 million motorcycles produced each year, only 56,000 were exported. Japan was still far behind countries like West Germany and Italy, which exported nearly 200,000 motorcycles annually. It was at this time that Japanese manufacturers set their sights on a certain race. The Isle of Man TT. TT stood for Tourist Trophy. It was the world's greatest motorcycle race. Manufacturers came up with the idea of boosting their international name recognition by taking part in the race and doing well. Honda got right down to work, developing a new motorcycle especially for the Isle of Man TT. The company set to work building on combat plane technology in the Second World War. At the time, motorcycle engines only had two valves. Combat plane engines were designed to have four. Engineers thought that by increasing the number of valves, they could improve intake and absorb efficiency, which in turn would increase horsepower. 
designed for a four-wheel engine with complex and consisted of many additional parts. In order to adapt the four-valve engine for a motorcycle, engineers first needed to shrink all the components down. In 1961, work was finished on the four-valve motorcycle engine. With a horsepower of 18, it was twice as powerful as any other motorcycle at the time. Unfortunately, Around the same time, Western makers had also successfully developed new technologies that allowed for a 20 horsepower engine. Honda looked for new improvements. They discovered that the gear that controlled the opening and closing of the valves contained a misalignment of 1 one hundredth of a millimetre. They hoped that by fixing this, they would be able to further improve intake and exhaust efficiency. A month later, the gear had been fixed, and work on the new engine was completed. At 21 horsepower, it was more powerful than its Western competitors. The Isle of Man TT in June 1961. Japanese motorcycles have earned the respect of riders around the world for their outstanding. Orders from abroad for Japanese motorcycles came rolling in after Honda's success in the Isle of Man. The year after the race, Japan became the largest exporter of motorcycles and began its reign as a motorcycle superpower. This is a dealer in second-hand motorbikes. Japan first became the world's top producer, mainly through smaller machines, but around the end of the 1960s, Japan also became a major force in larger motorcycles. And around that time, this was the top of the line. This machine first went on the market in 1972. It then went on to set a speed record of 256 km per hour in an American race which earned the title The King of Kings. Now, the secret of the speed of this machine is, of course, in the engine. And if you look down below, it's it's a four-cylinder engine. Back in an age when one and two cylinders were the norm, Japanese manufacturers were in the vanguard of creating four-cylinder motorcycles. And more cylinders means more horsepower, more horsepower means more speed. Now, when these big four-cylinder motorcycles started to get exported in the same kind of numbers as the smaller machines, that was when Japan's motorcycle empire really started to take shape. And what was driving all of this was top-class engineers. Kita Kyushin, Fukuoka Prefecture. Here, in one of the city's small factories, worked a man said to have the hands of God. His name was Hideo Yoshimura. During the Second World War, Yoshimura was a flight engineer who repaired and maintained combat planes. He took this position at the age of 19, the youngest ever to make it. After the war, he brought his engineering skills to the world of motorcycles. Yoshimura's greatest skill lay in aligning the camshaft that opens and closes the valves in an engine. By carefully shaping the curve of the camshaft, he was able to perfect the timing of the valve movement and get the most horsepower possible out of each engine. The motorcycle that Yoshimura tuned went on to win race after race all over Japan. In 1965, Yoshimura received a surprising offer. After winning the Isle of Man TT, 
Honda asked Yoshimura to oversee all of the engine tuning for their motorcycles at the custom bike road races held in Japan. Yoshimura was thrilled with the honor, having always dreamed of working for Honda despite the contract. Day after day, from morning to night, Yoshimura worked on motorcycle parts. The fruit of his labor was a motorcycle that ran at record speed. But then something unexpected happened. Parts stopped arriving from Honda. His contract with Honda was terminated. Yoshimura's fate had changed because some Honda employees were intimidated by his technical prowess. Abandoned by Honda, Yoshimura continued to make improvements to his bike designs by collecting parts from junkyards. Then Yoshimura suffered another setback. It happened in 1977, while he was carrying out an engine test. A spark reached a tank of fuel, igniting it. Fire enveloped the factory and left Yoshimura with serious burns. But the downhearted Yoshimura soon received a special delivery. It was a motorcycle. The motor company Suzuki had invited Yoshimura to customize their motorcycle for entry in Japan's top race, the Suzuka 8 Hours Endurance Road Race. It was a chance for them to strike a blow at Honda's dominance. At the time, Honda motorcycles were unripe. They had even earned the name the Invincible Armada. Yoshimura had suffered a series of misfortunes and had not yet made it to the top of the motorcycle seat. But he figured that if he beat Honda, he'd win recognition of the world's best. But in order to beat Honda, Yoshimura first needed to make his bike lighter and improve its top speed. In order to minimize weight, Yoshimura focused on even the smallest parts. Despite pain in his hands, the burns had partially paralyzed him. In the end, he was able to reduce the weight of the motorcycle by 16 kilograms. Next, Yoshimura went to work customizing the silencer system. By combining multiple silencers into one exhaust pipe, he was able to improve the exhaust efficiency. Also gave a significant boost to his horsepower. 1978, the day of the race. 70,000 spectators were present. Everyone was sure a Honda bike was going to win. If they were going to stay in the race, they needed new parts to support the wheel. But that would lead to a tremendous time loss, and Yoshimura's bike would be overtaken by a Honda bike. But Yoshimura had a plan. He filed down the fitting that the screw went through. Screw exposed, he was able to place the bolt on the end to lock the wheel in place.
This machine, which was made in the 1980s, was commercially available, but incorporates several features which were originally designed for racing bikes. For a start, you've got this cowling on the front here, which is aerodynamically designed to reduce air resistance. And then at the back here, if you look down here, you'll see that the parts of the frame supporting the rear wheel are all on this side of the bike. If you come around this side, there's nothing. You just undo the bolts, take the wheel off, and you can replace the tire very easily. Japanese motorcycles have dominated uh, motorcycle racing around the world for many years now. In fact, every season except one between 1974 and 2010, the winners in the largest class in the road racing world championships have all ridden Japanese bikes. One of the reasons why Japanese motorcycles were so successful in racing was to do with the materials used in them. Back in the old days, motorcycle frames were made out of steel. But around the 1980s, when this bike was made, Japanese manufacturers started using aluminium, which is considerably lighter and more conducive to greater speeds. From the late 1970s on, thanks to technical advances, Japanese riders began to win championship titles, and becoming a world-class rider is still a dream for many young Japanese today. The twin ring Motegi racing circuit in Tochigi Prefecture. Here, a woman races around the track at 200 kilometers per hour. Her name is Naoko Takazu. In 2006, she began racing in the All Japan Road Race Championship. Japanese riders with their sights on an international career often begin here. Most riders here are male. Takasugi has learned to use a smaller body build to outperform male riders when cornered. Takasugi has been almost dead since the age of two. But motorcycles later became her passion. Since the age of 16, when she first encountered motorcycles, she has thrown herself completely into the world of professional racing. Before I started riding motorcycles, I didn't have any self-confidence. But after I started racing here, I've learned to laugh and cry and to express my true self. Even so, Takasugi's hearing impairment created problems for her even on the track. Usually a rider knows when to shift gears by listening to the sound of the engine. That is difficult for her, so she had a special lamp fitted to let her know when she needs to shift. In October 2010, Takasugi took part in time trials for one of the races in the All Japan Road Race Championship. Starting positions for the final are based on the performance in trials. The green bike number 76 was Takasugi. She got off to a promising start. But as she rounded one of the corners, she ran into trouble. slid out of control as she leaned into the turn. Even a minor mistake during cornering can cost a rider his or her life. Fortunately, Takasugi escaped without any injuries. But as a result, her best time was 20 seconds out of 32. To make matters worse, the brakes on her bike were damaged in the crash. Little time remained for repairs before the race. Takasugi's supporters came to her assistance and helped her to repair her bike. Takasugi knew she couldn't let down all the people who had supported her. Finally, race time. Takasugi 
starting position is number 22 at the rear of the pack. To make up for her poor position, she zooms off at the top speed. She approaches the corner where she crashed during time trials. Takasugi must get the timing just right during this gear shift in order to maintain speed and avoid losing balance. I want to race internationally. That's my dream. In order to get there, I'm going to devote myself to improving my racing skills. Riders who want to compete internationally first need to prove that they can consistently finish among the top place races. Takasugi continues to speed through the race. Thinking back to my childhood, I think probably the first time I ever became aware of Japan was through motorcycles. Growing up in London, to begin with, it was all Triumphs and Nortons and BSAs, but by the time the mid-60s came around, the Japanese had taken over completely, and that's still how it stands now. Nevertheless, there are companies in other countries, in Asia and parts of Europe as well, which are making great strides, so 20, 30 years from now, I wonder how the motorcycle scene will look. I'll see you again next time. Japan is the world's number one consumer of eel, or unagi. Eel is regarded as a classic summertime delicacy that helps you to beat the heat. It will explore its culinary appeal.